Hey YouTubers, happy homebrew Wednesday, it's Mr. Sparty here. So, what am I drinking right now? Just drinking some water. Uh, I will have something in my hands in a little bit. Uh, so first, let me say again, thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for everything. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for commenting. I will get to all your videos as fast as possible. I've already watched some, already commented on some. So you guys all have great videos, and thank you again. So, what's going on? I'm going to cut over to some footage quickly about my apple raspberry wine, what's going on with that. Uh, so if you guys don't mind, that's going to be three to four minutes long. Watch that, and then when, when we come back, I'm going to uh, discuss my cider a little bit. So... Sit back, grab a beer, grab wine, whatever you want, watch that part of the video, and then I will be back with you guys with drinks to talk about my cider. Based on my last video, you guys saw that, so that apple raspberry wine was tasting pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and rack this off onto some potassium sorbates. I got a, another carboy over there sanitizing. And then let this sit for a week. You know, go ahead and put it on some potassium sorbate, degas it some, let it sit for a week, and then I'm going to bottle it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this racked off. I got another carboy here, all sanitized. So, go ahead and get my siphoning going. So, dump it back into my sanitizer. Just kind of get my hose drained out. There's the wine. There's my cardboard here getting filled up right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just throw a couple teaspoons of this in to mix in, and then just a quarter teaspoon of this. And go ahead and get those added to this and continue the siphon, then I'll be back. I had and added the sorbate and made it by sulfate. Probably not gonna be able to see it in there because of the star sand. So no, nah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to see it in there, but I went ahead and added that in. You can kind of see some on the inside of here that I got on there. I should have added that in first, I just forgot. So I'm going to go ahead and get this filled up and then I'm going to uh, mix it up with the drill and degas it a little bit. Alright, so here it is racked off. Unfortunately my uh, drill is dead right now, so I've been trying to get this. I'm going to really get started to gas it. That's the second time I've done it and I did it even more the time before and I'm guessing since this thing sat in a carboy for a couple of months I think it naturally degassed a lot of itself so I'm not too worried about that then so what we're going to do is put an airlock back on it You know, let this sit for a good week, just like it is. And then uh, next week, bottle it. So I think we're good. Here's a quick look at the apple raspberry wine. I racked this six days ago, 
and to some made by sulfate and sorbate. So today I'm going to go ahead and get all this bottled up. So I'm going to go ahead and get some bottles sanitized and get this bottled and then I'll show you the final result. So here's what we ended up with for wine. We basically have 22 regular 750 ml bottles. Got one, uh, you know, 1500 milliliter bottle. And then I ended up one that, that was just about half full. So I'm thinking that one I probably will pull out in a couple weeks and sample since it's only half full. There you have it. If you count this one as two, uh, you know, we basically ended up with about 24 and a half bottles, which is about right. So I'm going to let these sit upright for about four days and then I'll put them horizontally for storage. There you have it. There's the apple raspberry wine bottled. So you guys see I got all the apple raspberry wine done. That went quite smoothly and like I said I ended up with uh, about 24 and a half bottles. Uh, you know actually 23 and a half but one of them was a you know 1500 mil bottle so I promised you um, I would have something to drink when I came back so here's what's gonna happen now. So here we have the uh, the cider I did from the English Ale Yeast. I went ahead and bottled this one from the keg. This one, you can see this one's a partial bottle. Um, this one I bulk primed, you know, with a little over half a cup of sugar. I did it a couple weeks ago. The bottle's still pretty soft, so I don't know how, uh, how uh, carbonated it'll be. Uh, but I put this in the fridge a couple of days ago, so let's get these poured. We'll start with the English L. Not much of a hiss, so I, I don't know if I did a real great job um, bottling from the keg. So let me get this one put aside. And I think what you're going to find with both of these is both of them are just crystal clear. And this one definitely does have some carbonation in it still. Get the Scottish L1 poured. Okay, it did have a hiss to it. Let's get this one poured. Um, as you can see, you can see me right through it. Eh, not too much carbonation yet, though. I'm not going to worry about that, though. I really don't mind cider if it's uh, not carbonated. So let me get both these back in my fridge. Just a second. Okay, so English ale, Scottish ale yeast. First blush, you know, no difference in color. So. That one's got a real nice apple smell to it still. This one not so much. Now to be fair, uh, this one, I stopped ferment fermentation a little bit early. And so it ended up a little bit sweeter. This one I went ahead and let, the go, let go the whole duration so it's a little bit drier. Let's give these a whirl though. So this one I've been drinking already. Uh, this one's got a really nice apple flavor to it still. It's almost a hair sweet for me. Uh, I mean, if someone likes their cider a little bit sweet, this one's fantastic. Let's give the Scottish Ale one a taste. This one definitely uh, has less of an apple flavor, definitely less of a smell. I almost get a little bit more of an alcohol bite with this one, so 
I think I let this one go definitely a little bit longer, so it might be about a half percent or more alcohol than the other one. Still, it's pretty good. I still think if I had to choose, though, I really, this one, I think next time, I will definitely let it go a little bit longer. Um, I probably stopped it a little bit short. So, but even if the sweetness died a little bit, I think that would make this one exceptional. So for me, even though I like them both, uh, and I think they're both good yeast, I definitely think the English Ale won out on this one. So, now, next time I make it, I'm going to do something even different. Uh, next time I'll probably get a nice big 6-gallon batch, and I will use US04. Instead of using liquid, I'll go ahead and try one of the US04 dry packs and see if it turns out the same as this one did. Um, but that's probably not, I, I don't think I'll be doing that one until the fall, back when the orchards are in full bloom again, getting all their cider going. So, but there you have it. There's a side-by-side -side I've been promising for a while. Um, and I'll probably even mix the two. And who knows, maybe that would even be a good test. Do five or six gallons with each yeast and then blend the two, but... All in all, I'm very happy with that. So, now, on to my SJ Pour. I, that is sitting in a, uh, I guess you will call it tertiary right now, because what I did was, took it out of primary, put it in secondary, wrecked on cacao nibs, some raspberry pie puree, and then I have just re-racked it again into another carboy. It's been sitting in that for two days now. I'm going to probably let that sit for a week, maybe maybe in just five days. I just want to get a, get a chance to settle out a little bit more because I had a lot of junk. And secondary, just from all the cacao nibs and the raspberry pie puree. And then I'm going to go ahead and rack that into a bottling bucket and get it bottled. So I would imagine... Before next Wednesday, I will have my SJ Pour beer bottled up. And once I get that bottled, I'm going to go ahead and put out my SJ Pour video. It's not that I'm hiding anything. I just want to do it from start to end. So it's going to be a long, probably 40-minute video. But it's going to have all the way from grinding the grain all the way to bottling. So anyhow, I don't want to keep rambling on. This is long enough. So hope you guys have a good, uh, happy homebrew Wednesday. You guys have a good rest of your week, and I will talk to you guys next week. See ya.